Welcome to Kensington, a neighborhood in Philadelphia that has been struggling with addiction and poverty for decades. In recent years, Kensington has been known as the epicenter of the opioid epidemic in the United States. The forces starting to clean out McPherson Park and we recognize we saw drug activity and more addicts and homeless uh, moving, infiltrating like the residential, more of the residential community. So we are being proactive to make sure that our park doesn't become Needle Park next. Um, on any given day, we are um, asked to always clean up. We are, um, in the mornings I get up to do my little normal cleanup. I have found literal boxes, communals, boxes of feces, where it wasn't one person, it was like five or six people, where they just like, made a bathroom and then put it on the sidewalk where we just had it renovated. The streets department just did a beautiful project. It's beautiful. But now these are the things that we, we are always being impacted with. People aren't really thinking through what it is. So it has become a we versus them mentality because we are fighting for our lives too. But we are the ones that are unheard. The homeless and the addicts are being heard. I got the service equipment. I have I know how my fucking cigarette. Hey, mommy. I don't sell a single cigarette. Hey, mommy. I'm looking for what? Hey. Oh, wait, I just gave him See money. That. Come here, come here, come here. Look, come here. Money. Look, Blackie, who's getting can, can mommy, you grab a whole mommy. pack of Parliament? Yeah, why? Why yeah, do I yeah. gotta leave? Excuse me. I got raped. I didn't suck the Italian man's dick on Frankfurt Avenue. My mom got murdered. It's worse than what it was when I came down here. You know, you see more of the people that starting starting to come sleeping on the street, like across the street over there. Mm -hmm. You ask them to leave. They go they go one day. The police may come and get them away, and then they will come right back. But you just have to stay on top of it. You know, you don't want to just have your kids running around to come go to the store, see people sitting out in the middle of the sidewalk with syringes and smoking crack. So somebody around here have to chase them away or ask them to leave. There's places around here where they can take and go to and get up off the street like that, but they just choose to stay out here on the street. Mm. There's no respect because if they have respect for themselves, they, would, they don't have nothing for nobody else. I see them come from looking like a queen to looking like somebody you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that that was the same person. That's how bad they get when they come down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't even, don't even, it's not even from Philly. They come from all over the country, come down here, right down here in Kensington. I have I've seen people pass away out here on the street. Somebody was right in front of my door, I had to give them a knock on, mm -hmm. you know, to get them up. And they come right back. And, and, and a lot of them get an attitude because you got them up out of there. Despite the challenges, there are many organizations and individuals in Kensington who are working tirelessly to address the issues facing the neighborhood. We have to do things that just make sense, right? Instead of spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on cleaning, we have empty schoolhouses, empty warehouses. Take those millions of dollars, put these people in a, in a housing camp situation, and send everything there. It will reduce the cost exponentially. And you just do a work to, work to live program. You're staying here, you gotta clean. You're staying here, you gotta do this. And we'll stop spending money on cleaning the streets and picking up this and dumping tons and tons and tons of garbage and really focus on programming for our children, programming for our seniors, you know, um, inclusive in la language. Like we have all of these different programs that are happening. They're not in, translated in English and Spanish. Like, there's so many things that we could be focusing dollars on that would uplift people and, and pull them out of the situation. But all we're doing is saying, oh no, we need to understand where they are. We can't move them. We can't, do, we just go and talk to them. And when they're ready, they'll get help. But in the meantime, 
we're the ones that are being terrorized and affected on a daily basis. I feel good. I feel I feel really good. I feel great. Um, you know, just gets better every day, I guess. My worst day in recovery is better than my, my best day in addiction. Depends on what kind of drugs. I mean, I was smoking weed and stuff at like 13, but I didn't get into like, like serious addiction until I was like 19. You know, I mean, prior to that, I guess I just tried what everybody else tried recreationally, but you know, um, everybody doesn't have, you know, the disease of addiction where, you know, they don't know when to put it down and when to stop, you know, consumes them. Um, I have the disease of addiction, you know what I mean? Um, plenty of people I grew up with and I'm still friends with, you know, like we would do stuff recreationally and they were able to just put it down. I always did it to the max. I don't know. I mean, I guess when I was 19, um... I discovered Kensington and, you know, I started smoking crack and, you know, it just went downhill from there. Like, I did other drugs recreationally, knew how to put them down, but once I tried crack, it was, you know. I mean, I've had clean time, you know, um, I've never, up until I would say maybe three years ago, I never did rehab. I would just go home and get clean, but, um, you know. Life changes. I've, I've had significant clean time, but you know, um, maybe because I didn't do rehab and I wasn't like technically in recovery, maybe that's why it didn't work. I guess that's what um, you know. That's what I'm imagining. So I recently, you know, went to rehab. I don't know I was in Kensington. It was April last year, and um, I was just tired. It was like you know, I remember thinking in my head, I'm either it's either I'm gonna leave and you know and go to rehab like I keep saying I'm gonna do or I'm gonna die out here so I chose to go to rehab recovery is possible and many people in Kensington are working hard to overcome addiction and rebuild their lives I think it's better this time um, I relocated out of Philadelphia um, I think it's a good decision I like it up here you know, it's like, it's everywhere in Philadelphia. I mean, mostly, mainly in Kensington, but no matter where you live at in the city, you see the addiction and all. You don't see it as much up here, you know. I don't see needles, caps, or anything thrown all over. Um, so it's, it's good, like, you know, like, it just gets better every day. I don't, I haven't really had any cravings. Um, you know, I, when I tend to think about when I was out there in addiction, I just remember how bad it got. And every time I relapse, it gets worse and worse, you know, so. Um, it just it gets better day by day, you know, they will eventually, you know, not completely go away, but they, I guess, it, like subside, like where you don't have them as much anymore. You know, it gets easier and easier and life gets better, you know. Day by day, you can start living your life more. Like, I have a good life. I laugh every day, you know, go to work, come home, and, you know, live a normal life. Don't give up. You know, um, I know a lot of times when you're out there, you feel like you just can't do it and that, that you're going to die out there. But, um, you know, anybody can recover. You know, you just have to want it enough and don't give up. Kensington may have a long road ahead, but there is hope for a brighter future. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Kensington. We hope this documentary has shed light on the challenges facing this community and the inspiring effort to create positive change. <laughs>